So I've been asked before, what process is quicker, 2D animation or 3D animation? And the answer is they both actually take, I would say roughly the same amount of time, but where that time is spent differentiates depending on which type of animation that you're doing, 2D or 3D. So if you're working with 2D animation, you typically have to be more concerned with volume control and making sure that the characters stay on model. That's not really a problem in 3D because once you've modeled the character, you're using the same model for all of your shots. So needless to say that your character is going to look the same. A problem with 3D is why is it working? <laughs> or why is the rig why is the rig breaking? Why isn't my character going into the pose that I want to put them into? Why is this shot eating itself? Although that can happen in 2D also. But in 3D animation, you run into more technical problems than you typically do in 2D. In 2D, if you can draw it, it can happen. In 3D, you have to go into more maybe simulation or making sure that your model is created properly so that once you place the bones and the controllers in for the rig that the character deforms properly, doesn't bend in an awkward way. There's also the concerns of what we call the uncanny valley. So if the character's made in sort of an odd way or a rudimentary way, or the model just doesn't look quite right, sometimes the character can look a little scary. Not to say that that kind of thing can't happen in 2D because it can, it's just more usually a drawing problem or just a problem in the way that the character's moving in more of a conceptual way. Um, maybe lacking in the foundations of animation more so. Now, funny enough, 2D animation has become more technical in the last years, more recent years. So we can actually kind of go through a modeling, rigging, and animation process in 2D that's a little bit similar to 3D. And how we do that really kind of depends. So you could end up just drawing all of the parts and then rigging them together so that you're swapping parts when the character's changing direction or changing hand shapes. Uh, rather than bending the bones for the fingers, that's not as typical for small limbs like that. Not impossible, but not as typical. Um, other ways that we can do something like that in 2D is by using deformers to warp the shape. As of the making of this audio, I'm kind of learning that technique now. Um, for, but for that, you can create sort of a 2.5D kind of look by deforming your shapes and moving the shapes around with each other to simulate the objects moving in 3D space. But that is still, in a sense, faking it. We're implying the 3D space more than actually making it in 3D space the way that it is in 3D animation. Uh, so uh, the advantage of creating your models like that is once you've done it, you can go and reuse the model over and over and over again. And that's where 3D can potentially be a quicker process than 2D. If you're reusing the models and bringing them in for, let's say, sequel episodes or other short films. Now, the being able to create 2D puppets has allowed us to kind of have the same idea where you can reuse the puppets over and over again for you know, alternate episodes and shorts uh, or animated projects. Um, but still, I would say which one takes longer? I would say in the beginning, it's about the same. And then later, it will depend on whether you have reusable assets like that. And if so, then the 2D puppets or 3D, whatever it is that has more easily reusable assets is probably the quicker production in the long run if you're repeating, like if you're doing multiple instances of these characters or multiple episodes. Another thing to consider would be the complexity of the shots. So are you doing a lot with the camera? In 2D, it is possible to make 360 rigs where the 2D characters appear to move like 3D, but that's not necessarily easy to do if the characters are gonna be doing a lot of wild action with a rapidly moving camera, then in that case, it might be better to go with a 3D project because then you can place your character in your 3D scenes and then run them through. And then you can move the camera however you want. And of course in 2D, again, if you can draw it, it can happen. So if you're doing frame by frame, you can have the camera do whatever you want. But there's also tracking all of that. Uh, I like to, if I'm working with the camera, uh, if the camera's doing something simple like a pan, then I will tend to animate the character as if the camera wasn't there and then actually move the camera in the scene, as you can do with some software like Harmony. 
But if the camera's doing something really wild, like chasing the character through a city, then it's not really going to work to try to animate the character like the camera's not there. Probably have to move the camera and the character together in 2D. In 3D, it might depend. I would say if you have a 3D animator who says differently, go with their opinion, because I don't work in 3D as much. But in 3D, I feel like you have the advantage of being able to move the character in the space without worrying about the camera, and then you can go through with the camera and follow the character and track them and point the camera wherever you want to go, and the way the character is angled or posed is still already set. So that is one area of uh, animation that I think benefits from 3D. Uh, you can also use the best of both worlds. So if you have somebody who is, or you, are interested in 2D and 3D and you're not sure, you can always do pre-production in one and then production in the other. So for Fate Saga, we're using 3D assets for the backgrounds just to use as an underlaying layer for the matte painting of the, you know, of the, back, of the final backgrounds. Now, if the background was going to move excessively, we would have to account for that because the matte painting would have to kind of be done in an animated way, or perhaps we could break the parts down into pieces and move those on keyframes, sort of like motion graphics. But it would sort of depend on what angle it is and what exactly is happening. We are gonna run into that later in the episode. So uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope it give you some insight into 2D animation versus 3D animation. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything else that you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day.